All right, everyone, welcome back to a Briona's Pickleball Breakdown. Stay tuned to the end of this video because Kaden and I are going to hop on the court and go over how you can actually create space to be very offensive on your shots. Right now, we're gonna look at a Tuesday night pickleball match, a pro match that he played in, and it's a very short point, but we're gonna break it down and we're gonna go over this very key thing that players, top players and pro players do all the time and you should be doing as well. Now, let's jump right in. All right, here we go, Kaden. We're gonna watch it in full time with the viewers, and uh, this is a very short point, oh, yeah. but we will, uh, Break it down and got a little drive drop. Ooh. Ooh. Super short point there. You know what? Just for just for kicks, we're gonna Let's watch, watch it again. We're gonna watch this. Uh don't blink, everybody. No. Don't no. blink. Because this blink, is, it this might is, be over. This is a quick one. Nice deep return. That's actually a pretty good drive by Mr. How we Kane. like to win points though. Nice right. and quick. Nice and quick. All right, Kaden. Now let's break it down in slow-mo. We got Adrian serving here. Oh yeah. He's got a good tennis background. Nice rotation there. Passer with the return. You guys are still stacking here. Have to, to unwind it. Yep, trying to keep those forehands in the middle here. Nice drop. All right. Um, so what do you think about this drive choice, by the way? Let's let's back it up here. Kaden. I actually like the decision. Um, Nico, one, already has a very good drive. Um Nico was a tennis player at uh, Notre Dame, so he has a great drive. Um, and in this situation, maybe hits it a little bit higher than I think he wanted to. Sure. Yeah. But I think it was the smart spot, actually. Um, where he puts it, as you can tell, I'm kind of staying a little bit bigger here in the middle. Sure. Just to kind of help Pesa out um, with the unwinding of the stack. And he kind of puts it in a spot where he can make me maybe try and do something dumb by reaching a little bit too mm. far with my forehand. Luckily, I know Pesa is going to be there and, um, and, and it catches kind of an easy ball for Pesa. But that spot can cause a lot of trouble in mixed doubles, maybe with, you know, uh, men's doubles, women's doubles, where someone's trying to be a little bit bigger in the middle to help their partner out and, uh, maybe just aren't making the smartest decisions. I know, uh, if, that this was me a year ago, I probably would have tried to hit that ball. <laughs> sure. And and one of the reasons why uh, it's important, so we're going to back it up here. Um, Pesa hits a really good return. Obviously, he's very, very mobile and he could get over. Mm -hmm. But what is the reason um, that you're not going all the way to your side here, Hayden? Um, and staying a little bit close to the middle. I like to stand a little bit more in the middle only because I know I can cover behind me. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing them to kind of hit me a ball behind me and make a perfect shot instead of just going to the middle and possibly getting an easy point out of my partner. Sure, yeah. So um, a lot of players unwinding the stack, we can call it, when they when they are crossing behind their partner here. Um, you, Kaden, I think, you know, this is very, very good. If Nico here w was trying to, you know, play a winner here or try to go down the line that's the highest part of the net and yep. you're gonna kind of give them that it's and the smallest part of the court too you know yeah. you're dealing with sideline you're dealing with a lot of different things i just don't think that's a shot that he is thinking to himself that's high percentage yeah well he could go for that and i think that's what a lot of lower level players do with their drives mm -hmm. but the other thing uh there as well is you don't you're not quite sure where pesa is right so if you if you are within a paddle's reach or something to to get this i think that i think that you're clogging middle and, and that's that's what we need to cover first I yeah think. right well one one big shuffle step left for one big shuffle shuffle step right i'm in either position to cover both those balls personally sure and then nico here yeah you're right uh, i kind of agree with you here that he definitely hits it a little bit higher than he would like um and by the way for those um that struggle with players that like to drive the ball and bang the ball i want you to notice pesa's shot here he kind of just blocks it so very very little or small paddle movement there and that brings that ball Re, you know, really, really short. So Nico actually has to really hustle to get to this one. Yeah. So that's a really good shot there by my Pesa there. So Nico barely gets to this ball and it lands in the kitchen here, but we're going to actually watch Caden. And this is the whole point of this video. We're going to watch Caden create that space 
And and then we're gonna watch him actually attack Mayo straight on. Boom. Ooh, chicken wing. A little bit of a chicken wing there. Love so me some chicken wings. Yep. Bring on the buffalo sauce there. And then uh so let's just talk about this though, Kate. And as this ball's coming over, what are you thinking here, even? Right? Yeah. Well, first thing off the bat, right? Pesa hits a good drop with with Nico being back, right? Sure. And so once I kind of see him move forward kind of quickly towards that ball, yeah. I know that he's going to be hitting something very kind of lofty and lifty that's yeah. just going to be kind of sitting up there. So first thing you can see is I'm set and in position to take this ball in the air if he maybe hits it just a little bit too hard. Sure. We're always trying to look for the swinging volley first. Right. And then if I can catch him in that position where he's a little bit off balance and taking a ball in the air. That's a pretty good position for me. Yep. And then right? and then once you notice that this ball is going to drop, let's talk about, you know, your footwork and what you do here. Let's, yeah. let's talk about that. Take a little bit of a shuffle step to open up to the forehand side a little bit more just so I'm not hitting the ball straight on in front of me, but just a little bit to my right. Um, and from there, I'm fully behind this ball. And I will say, I think I telegraphed it a little bit too soon. I think I kind of showed him a little bit, but I am a very deceiving player. I can make the same shot that I'm hitting here a dink as well. Sure. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. So personally, if this is me, I'm maybe saying, okay, maybe I'll shorten up my backswing a little bit more next mm -hmm. time just so I don't give it away too much. But also that being said, I can take that same exact swing and still make it a dink, which I think is why Nico was thinking in this case, oh, uh, maybe he's not speeding the ball up. It's it's early in the point. You know, yeah. a lot of the times, you know, people don't expect you to always attack early on. So um off of this ball here, I was just saying, you know what? We're up 7-0. Maybe I can uh, look to be aggressive and, and get something here. If not, hey, you know what? It's it's 7-1 now. I'm not too worried about it. I'm thinking about my probability um, and my risk versus reward. So um, in this situation, I sped it up and, you know, hey, I found a good spot and got away with it. Sure. And then now let's talk about the spot and we're going to hop on the court in a second. But that creating space coming around the ball. And then also let's just talk about the spot really quick. As Nico is a lefty here, he has to sit backhand, right? right. So this spot, you can kind of tell it's more to his left. And, you, right. and that's where we get that chicken wing. So when we yep. talk about the dominant side, whether they're a righty or a lefty, this is the spot you know, primary spot, which, which is a good target. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing is I also know Adrian is sitting in the middle, sitting ready for uh, on forehand. Right. Yeah. So I can't really go towards the middle line. I actually have to push it a little bit more towards Nico. And if he's sitting forehand, I'm what you would consider screwed. Right. <laughs> I mean, if he's sitting forehand here, which most players in this position are not going to, I'm screwed. Right. If I go, if I send my ball a little bit more to my right when I'm playing, but on the screen, the left, if I send it a little bit more to the left, Adrian's forehand is sitting there. Yeah. Right. So I find this kind of little weak spot where I can chicken wing him on the backhand side, knowing he's going to sit backhand and I can jam him up a little bit. Yeah. There you go. So again, creating space uh, to create offense. I think a ton of players typically don't realize how stepping off the line or you know buying time letting that ball come up to the apex can be very valuable as you're attacking so now Caden, we're gonna hop on the court we're gonna go over this exact shot that you hit and we're gonna teach it so that you can get better let's now let's get after let's, it let's get after it okay let's talk about creating space for offense first things first we need at least a foot of space for our contact point once I have this spot here, my paddle head is dropped low and notice it stays out in front of my body. One thing we talked about in the video is I took a little bit too big of a wind up, so I'm gonna keep my paddle in front of my body so it looks a little bit more like a dink. From here, once I have all of this set up, now I really have to focus on the precision of my ball. So the main thing I have to worry about now is picking a location and being precise with the spot that I pick over just hitting the ball hard. So where am I going to attack? maybe uh, a dominant hip or a dominant shoulder, um, catching them in the wings in awkward spots. Um, maybe I'm gonna try and sneak one past Jordan. You know, it might not work, but we'll give it a go. So 
So hopefully I kept my swings a little bit shorter there, but the whole goal is to disguise these shots to look like something else, to keep your opponents guessing. If you can keep them guessing, usually good things happen. So keep in mind, you're setting this ball up, you're hitting this ball at about 60%, nothing too crazy. You're focusing more on the location of your shot and hopefully setting yourself up for something high and juicy. Yeah, I really love that, Kaden. Again, I really like that he mentioned the place over pace, right? The target and where we're targeting is the most important spot and most important thing that we need to think about. Lastly, make sure that you know who your opponents are. Are they a right-handed player or are they a left-handed player? Once you remember that and know what side that their dominant side is on, make that your first attacking option. And then from there, you can make adjustments. But again, thanks for watching this video. If you wanna see another great video where we talk about attacking, click up here.